now at 8:11 with more of our series Marketing Mind Games. On Monday we talked about a few ways retailers think they are tricking us into spending more, but just how effective are they? We teamed up with Martin Lindstrom, chairman of the marketing neuroscience neuroscience company Biology Inc. and author of Biology to go inside the brain of a shopper. Hannison, a married mother of two, agreed to be the subject in our experiment. This is a 32 channel EEG cap. First, the researchers placed an electrode cap on Kelly's head to monitor her brain activity. Then two eye cameras are added. One follows what Kelly is looking at, while the other is pointed at her pupil, which will dilate when something catches her attention. In a separate room, the recording devices are connected. Kelly's eyes are calibrated and then tested. But before the actual experiment can begin, a monitor is used to make sure that there is a strong enough signal coming from Kelly's brain. Martin Lindstrom's instructions to Kelly are simple. When you're walking down the aisle, you pick whatever product you want. For the first part of this experiment, Martin and his team removed all of the eye-catching sale signs, special offers, and displays. But there are some products still discounted by the manufacturer. Kelly stops and looks at several items, but in the end, only chooses a few. Two out of three is on sale, and that's the reason why you go, yes. go with it. Kelly's brain scan shows there was very little stimulation. For part two of the experiment, the same aisle is transformed into an overwhelming sea of big displays, special offers, and good deals. The reason for this, to see if Kelly's brain would respond differently. And it did. Kelly notices the big sale signs and takes full advantage. But she doesn't fall for every tactic. <laughs> this time, Kelly buys more items than before. The shampoo was a good deal, and I haven't tried that shampoo, so I figured, you know, for, for $2, it was a good chance to try it. Very good deal, 99 cents. I need a new mascara, and it was on sale, so I was like, okay, let's throw it in. Now tell me, how was the experience this time? Um, it was, it was fun to see the big signs and everything, and I laugh and notice that I'm getting manip manipulated a little bit here. But there is one product that Kelly stays true to. The pediatrician recommended this, and it works well for my son, so I have to stay loyal for my children. Is there anything in this chart which is not on sale right now? Um, the one where the, the kids the lotion are sitting for my children seat. And the moose. It was on like the, the regular sale, but not your big signs, because I need a new moose. But you didn't, well, you, last time you didn't. I didn't, didn't catch it. it. You didn't catch it? And this time I saw it. Martin Lindstrom, you little manipulator, you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Now, I want to point out to the audience, not a scientific experiment at all, but what can we learn generally well, from what can, you did? We can learn, basically, that we are hardwired to be manipulated by those retailers. And you better stay clear when you go into the retail store. So what, what happens exactly? What happened inside her brain when she saw those big signs? Well, it was amazing to see that when there was no sign, almost no activity was going on in the brain. But when there was a lot of signs up there, it was almost like a fire ball you could see that the emotional part of the brain was really active. The emotional part? Yeah, the emotional part. So it was amazing to see she was really engaged in this particular sales. And actually the eye movements was even higher. So really she was hardwired to be seduced by all those And yet she parts. wasn't totally seduced. She pointed out that when it came to that lotion for her child, that was not on sale, but she picked it out twice. Yeah, but that was really interesting because what happened was that she was actually not buying a product for herself. She was buying a product for her baby, the four-month-old kid at home. So she was so emotionally engaged with the kid at home that she didn't care about the discount. And what we can see from this study is that when you look into the brain, again, the emotional part of the brain well, was activated. Out. Yeah. And, you know, when we take a look at other studies we've done on baby powders like Johnson Johnson's baby powder, we actually have seen that similar reactions is happening. When we expose people for this particular brand, people are almost becoming small babies in their mind. So that is what retailers would like you to to feel like because then you are not buying stuff on discount and basically they're earning more money. She also showed some contrasting behavior activity when it came to picking out the um, the, sh the shaving cream for her husband, the shaving gel. Yeah, that was very interesting because basically she bought one shaving cream the first time, the second time she bought four. Now she don't need four shaving creams. Just because it was they were on sale? Just because it was on sale and what we saw again on the on the screen was enormous activities going on in the brain. So much so that it was almost the second half 
highest emotion we saw in the brain. The highest was the baby uh, product, or the product for the baby. The second one was the saving creams. You know, she also said, which I thought was interesting, that she, she acknowledged that she knew she was being manipulated, but she still allowed it to happen. Yeah, well, that's because 85% of everything you and I do when we're out shopping is taking place in our non-conscious part of the brain. So that basically means that we are almost like zombies when we're out shopping. Finally, you have some tips to help people avoid some of the traps that they can run into in these stores. What are they? Well, I think the most important thing is that you need to do a shopping list when you're going out shopping. Here's the trick. If you do a shopping list before you go out shopping, you will not be seduced by the retailer. And only get what's on that list. Exactly. Okay. The second point is you have to dis disrupt your routines. Now, here's the case. We are seduced by rituals every day. An average American is executing 300 rituals every day. If you break them, we wake up from our dreams, and it means that we're evaluating products from scratch. So if you take another path into a supermarket, guess what? You're going to save money. And last but not least, and this is really funny, but actually you should not eat or you should eat before you go out shopping. Because we can see if you're hungry, you're not only buying more food, you're actually buying more products, you're buying more clothing, more CDs, really? everything. Yeah. Okay. I believe you. And also, wear that cap. If everybody had to wear that cap, you'd be in and out of the store so fast, you'd buy nothing. Exactly. Martin Lindstrom, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure.